What is up? Well, welcome back to the Real Wise Podcast. Um, you know, when when I'm planning out these uh, podcasts, I'm I'm seeing ahead, you know, to not only these that we have with no guests, but the ones that we're having guests upcoming. I'm I'm pretty pumped up, just to be honest with you. I'm pretty I'm pretty damn pumped up. So, um. Today's podcast is actually going to be a series of three. It's the first of three. And it's, it has the, the flavor of um, uh, entrepreneurship from a health standpoint, how do entrepreneurs stay healthy uh, physically and really mentally and all of that. And I've been going through... Um, uh, a transformation with that myself, um, which uh, I've never really talked about before. So this is the this is the beginning of that. Uh, I know a lot of people talk about their health transfer transformations or what they want to do on social media. I don't really do that. I don't really talk about that. I, I don't talk about politics very much. I don't take pictures of my food very much. I have a little bit in the past, but that's not something I do. Those are not things that I think bode well on social media, nor, nor do I communicate to people by, you know, being vindictive on social media. I see that a lot, but this health transformation, I really started in September and um, I go off of the premise. This is probably one of the most important things you're going to get from this episode. This is one of three, but this episode or this, uh, this statement that I'm about to say is, um, it was important to me. And it's really important to anybody that's trying to accomplish anything as an entrepreneur. Um, the reason that I, people say, well, why don't you post that stuff on social media? That you're doing it, you know, it's a way that you get held accountable by other people. And I have a rule: if you need to be held accountable by other people, you don't want it bad enough yourself. And typically, that does not work out. Um, I really made a change in September. Call it October first, but it, it really started in September of 2021, where I just got sick and tired. You know, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever felt like that physically maybe mentally just tired of a place that you're at. And um, I, I read a couple of books. You know, I'm an avid reader and I was reading a couple of books. And the, the book in particular was, was You Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. And that really got to me. Uh, it didn't get to me because the guy is an unbelievable uh, ultra marathoner, uh, military person, uh, has unbelievable lessons in persistence and making goals happen and all of that. It, it got to me because I, I was lit. I was watching a guy through reading this book that just wanted it and, and was tired of where he was at and he wanted it. And that resonated with me because there's a lot of people that bullshit, <laughs> a lot of people. I know probably all of them. They are bullshitters when it comes to themselves. It's bullshitters when they come to social media. It's bullshitters when it comes to life and, and health. You know, I see people posting, you know, I'm going to do this with my health or I'm going to eat clean and I'm not doing this. And, and a week later, they're, they're doing the same thing they were doing before that. So they're bullshitting themselves. I, I was just tired of that. I was doing that to myself mentally. And uh, I'm 54. You guys know that I'm 54. And I'm also, um, I was in pretty good shape, but I was probably overweight. So during this journey that I've been in, I've lost about 75 pounds. And uh, again, I'm not here. I don't care what you think about that. Uh, I think some people think it's great. Some people, sorry, that uh, phone seems to be going off there. Some people think that's great. Some people think, oh, big deal. I'm going to do more than that. Other people think I could never do that in a million years. My, my mission here is to tell you that you can do that. Uh, my mission is also to tell you that 
Um, do not limit yourself on what you and the human body can achieve. I really, really want to impress upon you um, that. So this first of three is going to be about my eating habits and what I did to lose 75 pounds since really October 1st. This, so it's going to be all about eating today. Uh, my next podcast is all going to be about my working out regiment. Uh, I've treated that very, very serious. And I've got some rules behind that. And then my third one is uh, other things you should think about and some mentors that I've had in this journey so far. This is a really young journey, right? September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. You know, I'm only eight months, seven, eight months into this. And uh, this is a journey. This is not stopping. Uh, this is not something that um, is uh, just a part of my year of 2022 and end of 2021. This is like a lifetime uh, commitment that I'm making to myself. It's a big deal. It's really, really important for several reasons. One, my family. Uh, I want to be around for them. Number two, I want to push myself to see where this goes. People say, are you going to, you know, I've been running a lot. So are they going to, you know, are you running a marathon? Are you doing more than that? Like these ultra marathons? Uh, I am registered for the Indianapolis half marathon. I'm doing that in May, May 7th. I'm registered for another race in Iowa called the Big Seven. It's a, it's a challenging seven mile race that I've run before, twice before. Uh, and I want to see how those go and we'll see what goes from there. But I want to push myself. I've been doing that physically and I'm enjoying it. And it's really helped me grow uh, uh, to, be, uh, to be able to grow as a person. So today, though, uh, we're going to talk about eating and nutrition and, and how that has really kind of changed my um, um, thought process. It's changed my um, uh, really focus. It's also changed how I feel. I can tell you specifically, specifically that the what you put in your body as far as eating is a huge difference. I know it's a cliche, but I'm telling you, I eat for fuel now. I just don't eat mindlessly. And I don't eat um, from a toxicity standpoint. There's a there's the thin, the line between toxicity and poison is dosage. And I and I, I follow somebody that talks about that. And it's been a really, really important thing. Entrepreneurs do a lot of weird shit. They do a lot of stuff that they'll sacrifice their mentality and their body physically for their business or, or several businesses. And um, I'm just telling you that if you want to, if you want to perform as an entrepreneur, take a look at what you're doing uh, in these three areas for these next three podcasts what you're eating or what you're eating and drinking, what you're doing physically for workouts and exercise. And number three, uh, other stuff that you could be doing. I'm telling you, if you want to be at a high performing from a performance standpoint, you will, um, you will look at this stuff and you, sorry, you're going to want to look at this stuff because it does make a difference. All right. So let's get into this. Number one. Um, so, Here's the, here's the thing. No fruit afternoon. This is a, um, this is a, um, uh, rule that I got from Jesse Itzler. I, it's one of the books I've read in, in my journey, um, living with a Navy SEAL. That Navy SEAL was David Goggins. Um, and, uh, having the ability to uh, listen to him. He's an entrepreneur and he, he runs, he does some, a, a lot of running marathons. He's got 19019 uh, project, which is basically climbing the Mount Everest. Uh, he does that. Uh, he's definitely been a, a quote unquote book mentor of mine through this process, but his no fruit after 12, after 12, afternoon. And uh, I followed that and it's worked really, really well. And it makes sense. Fruit has a lot of sugar in it and sugar has been my enemy. But if you can put sugar in the first part of your day 
and have that work itself out uh, through activity and exercise, um, you're going to be better off. So again, uh, no fruit after 12. Number two, I got into this regimen of eating oatmeal every single morning. Now, this isn't just regular oatmeal, guys. This is like some souped up oatmeal. I got this idea from Nick Bear. We're going to talk about this on the third podcast, all these mentors that I kind of been following. But Nick Bear is a nutritionist and an ultra hybrid athlete lifting and, and physical exercise of, of not only lifting, but running these ultra marathons and, and ultra uh, and marathons in general. But nutrition, Bear Nutrition uh, Performance is his company. And he talks about these, these sludge bowls that he eats every morning. Well, my sludge bowl contains, you know, oatmeal is the base, but granola, you know, some fruit at that point, cacao nibs. He's got me on these cacao nibs. I love that. So shout out to him. Unsweetened coconut blueberries are a big part of that as well. But I love these things. I, it's my time with coffee. I'm a coffee guy. I'll talk about that in a second that I get to spend, you know, 45 minutes to myself and, and really kind of think about my day, what I want to put forth physically, mentally, as an entrepreneur and business-wise, family-wise, things like that. Um, I drink a lot of water. Uh, if you are at our house, you know, we drink a lot of bottled water. We drink a lot of soda water, uh, just water in general out of the tap, although I do more bottle than anything. Uh, that's a shout out to Heather because we talked about this quite a bit. Uh, but water is really, really important. It's not the most important thing. I think people run away with that. And what I've learned in my journey is water on itself can be detrimental if you drink too much. You can actually, you can actually, in a sense, drown. There's a, there's a, there's a, um, a way that you can drink too much water uh, where you deplete, deplete yourself of uh, electrolytes and um, electrolytes. Think of your car, uh, the gasoline in your tank is your energy, but without that spark plug, creating that spark for that explosion of, this is a piston, okay? I'm not a mechanical guy, you guys know that. But without that spark plug, which is your electrolytes, you're gonna go nowhere. It doesn't do you any good if you got a high octane gas in there without that spark plug, not gonna work. So again, uh, drink a lot of water, but make sure you're replenishing with electrolytes. What are electrolytes? Sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium. There's others, but those are the really the ones that you focus on. So in, in the mornings before noon, if you eat a banana, potassium, you know, sodium, I do salt food a little bit more. I find that I do that, but also there's other ways that you can get electrolytes, um, and, and you should probably look into that. I'm not a certified dietitian, nutritionist, doctor, or anything like that. The other advice I would give you is to make sure that you check yourself out physically by a professional, use their advice. They're trained uh, like that. Uh, so so uh, I would, I would have, have you um, get your advice from them. I'm just telling you what has worked for me uh, with this. So I don't want to go too far without that quote unquote disclaimer right? Dude. Okay. We hit that. We hit that. Good. Um, the base of my eating has been high protein, low carb, low fat, no sugar and high fiber. That's really the base. If you pulled across the base. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a steak kind of guy. I'm a chicken kind of guy. I'm a fish kind of guy. Those are, are my, the staple of my my bulk proteins with that. I love fish. I love chicken. I love steak. Uh, so I try to rotate between those. I'll do a little bit of some other things in there as well, but that's really the basis of my, my big uh, protein type of, of uh, meals. Low carb. So I'm trying to really focus on low carbs. I don't need any breads. I don't eat any, anything with higher carbs in it. No, you know, so cakes and all that stuff is out of there. I don't eat any of that. Uh, vegetables are really, really a good staple as well uh, that I do get a lot of uh, carbs from uh, and low fat. So the, the broccolis, uh, cauliflower, squash, that type of thing, I'm all over that. 
I do less of like things like potatoes, like I keep out the starchy stuff, but that's, that's really kind of my focus, high protein, um, low carbs, low fat, no sugar, sugar is my enemy and uh, uh, really high fiber veggies. I, I'm all about it. Green beans is another one that I, I absolutely love beans in general. I get a little more protein from them, but uh, I, I do put those in uh, my diet as well. I do not eat past 6.30 p.m. I don't eat. Why? Because I've realized a couple things. Number one, after 6.30 p.m., that's when, you know, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, you come home, you've got stress, and this is where kind of the emotional type eating comes in place for the most part is after 6.30. So I try to cut that off at 6.30 uh, but the other thing, so that keeps me out of trouble, but the other thing that I like to do that for is uh, a fasting process. The studies of fasting are through the roof as far as the benefits. And I won't go into those in detail on this particular podcast, but um, look into them. So I do these little mini fast from 6.30 till, you know, I might eat at 7.30, 8.30 in the morning. I might go longer sometimes um, where it's a 16-hour fast, but these 12-hour, 16-hour fasts are really, really good for your body. I haven't done these longer-term ones, but I'm going to do one where you're fasting for 48 hours and, and that type of thing. Um, right now, I'm kind of tr in training mode, so I don't want to, I don't want to, mess with that when I have a race coming up. So I'm, I'm really cognizant of that. But again, not only am I pushing my body physically from a training aspect, we're going to talk about that on the next podcast, but I'm really kind of pushing my body where it can go with what I'm eating. Um, I have, uh, I also cut out, there's no juices. I don't drink any juices whatsoever. I do, like I said, low amounts of starchy foods like potatoes and carrots and things like that. I've just cut them out. Um, I love French fries, but I don't eat them anymore because of they're probably not overly great for you. Even like baked potatoes, even if it was plain, I try not to eat it because of the starch uh, there and um, some of the other things that you get uh, with that. So uh, I also do, don't do any cream sauces, dressings other than vinaigrettes. I typically get those on the side when I do. I don't do any ketchup, any mayos. But I do use, uh, Heather got this yogurt-based dressing. I do use that quite a bit uh, when I use it. And I always put dressing on the side. I don't put it on the salad. So I can control what I'm taking with that. Really, the, the vegetables that I get in my salad are a nice base for me. And they're very good from a, um, uh, from a um, vitamin standpoint. I try to focus on that as well it's usually the dressing where you run into the problem. So I try to use that as sparingly as um, I can. Um, no processed food, completely cut that out. I only use true or raw foods, no processed food whatsoever. So if it's processed, uh, that might be good for some people, but that's not me. Uh, I'm not doing any processed food. Again, this is my list. This is really what was a big part of me losing that weight in, in conjunction to the other two major things I'm going to talk about. But when I started to implement this, it was a huge um, scenario. So no processed food, only raw or true foods. Um, fats through nuts and avocados. I, I do. It's important to bring in fats. It does a lot of things for your body, but they have to be good fats. And those typically come from almonds, cashews, uh, avocados is another way to get that. And I focus on that. I do coffee in the morning. I love coffee. People say, well, John, why aren't you a tea guy? Do you ever look at teas? I don't. I've tried to do teas. I really try it. I think there's a sophistication in teas that you don't necessarily get with coffee. I just can't do it. I like a tea really once in a while, but I love coffee. I like coffee even during the day. Um, now, can you overdo it? Sure. But I think that the benefits of coffee with the oils, the caffeine a little bit, and some of the other things in coffee um, 
are really, really good for you. I think the benefits outweigh the bad. Now, if you look online, if you look at studies, there's all kinds of studies, good and bad. They seem to come up all the time. Coffee's good for you. Coffee's bad for you. If you feel coffee's bad for you, go to something else. Um, and there are a lot of alternatives um, that you could try and drink. Uh, mud water is one uh, that's a non coffee. Uh, I'm not sure if it's got caffeine in there. Um, and I, I don't think it does have caffeine by the, uh, now that I think about it. And um, what is the other drinks? Kombucha and all the other stuff that people drink. Go to those, try them out. Works. Do what works for you. That's the, that's the thing that I learned the most about this process is find things that work. These are just things that work for me. It may not work for you. And that's why it's always important with your baseline, maybe to go sit with a dietitian, nutritionist, doctor, um, and find out what the baseline is for you. Are you allergic to anything? Um, because there's a lot of planning perhaps that goes into this. Uh, luckily enough, I have a supportive wife that really does an unbelievable, outstanding job. I don't deserve uh, what she does. Uh, sometimes it's a shout out to you, Heather, wherever you are, I know you're listening to this, but, um, uh, is there's a lot of planning that goes involved with food, uh, in, in how you're eating. So you want to make sure that you have support as well. So make sure that not only are you visiting with those professionals that I talked about, but also with the people that you're living with in, in making sure that this, uh, happens. So coffee is, um, coffee is my thing. Love it. I do a lot of dark coffees. I'm a Dunkin' guy. I do like dark coffee. I've been trying the Black Rifle coffee lately. I do like that. I'm going to try more of that. My all-time favorite is from a coffee roaster in Key West, Florida and New Orleans called Baby's Coffee. They have a lot of awesome dark roast blends. And um, if you get a chance, check them out. Uh, but those three typically are what I'm drinking uh, as far as coffee-wise. Dark chocolate is my treat. Uh, it's my friend. Dark chocolate, there's a ton of studies that how good dark chocolate is for you. It kind of rhymes with the family of coffees. And, um, you know, I mentioned earlier um, these cacao nibs that I was talking about. It's the prelude to how they make coffee. It's the bean itself and the shells. A lot of nutrients, a lot of antioxidants in there, but I love the complexity of the taste of dark chocolate. That's why I love coffee, probably. That's also why, um, and, and during, that's why I love other foods, by the way. But during this process, I've really kind of learned to taste my food differently. I'm very cognizant of how I'm eating and what I'm eating, but I'm also present in my eating process in the taste of food and things like that. It's been a weird journey. I love it. Weird in, in a positive way, but I wasn't expecting that. That's what I meant by weird. And I don't know, for me, it's been really, really cool. So dark chocolate is my friend. Uh, that's my little treat uh, that I get. Uh, and it reminds me of dessert. It's definitely complex, a little sweet, but uh, really, really cool. Uh, my other uh, outlet, if you will, is hot sauce. Man, I love hot sauce. Um, and hot sauce has a way of being complex sometimes as well. Uh, my son, who is seven, we do the, and Heather as well, we do these hot sauce challenges. You probably see, um, I don't know if you've seen the show on YouTube called Hot Ones, um, but uh, um, Evans is the guy's last name. What is his first name? I forget his first name. Um, is it Ryan Evans? Anyway, um, he does such a great job on that, but that's kind of where it's piqued my family's interest in different hot sauces. So if you come to my house, we have, we're like the condiment queen and king. But if you come to my house, hot sauces, we have oodles and oodles of hot sauces from very mild to you'll burn your brain. It, your brain will fall out, uh, out of your skull and it'll be laying there. The stuff is so hot and it's kind of fun going through those, but I'd use hot sauce a lot, especially on, on seafood and, and chicken and things like that. We also have a really good time with it. My, my basis of hot sauce, of course, people use Frank's. We use Frank's a lot, but Bouillard's, I don't know if you, you have seen that in a store. 
uh, but it's it's from Louisiana. They make a hot sauce. They make a um, they make a uh, a hot sauce that is not only buffalo but also um, not jalapeno in it, but the um, um, not serrano peppers. I forget the pepper it is, but I'll put it on the screen. I'm thinking of the editing they're going to do, and I'll put it on the screen. But um, it, it's really, really good, and it's like way cheap. It's inexpensive, so like try this stuff. It's not really that hot, but it's a nice intro to, to if you want to get into hot sauces, if that's your thing. It's kind of fun. It is kind of fun to burn your face off once in a while, not expecting it and just kind of burning your face off. That is kind of fun. But if you want to intro, I would say like a Bouillard's, a Frank's, things like that um, uh, would be Tabasco, of course, would be that. I don't like the Tabasco type sauces, uh, that that style of sauce. Maybe we'll do a maybe we'll do a hot sauce um, podcast to shout out to hot ones. We'll see. Um, anyway, uh, so that's been that I've also discovered, this is a discovery of mine, cauliflower pizza. If you have not tried cauliflower pizza, try it. Uh, it's the crust is made out of cauliflower. You would never know. And if you like thin crust where the crust gets, um, uh, uh, there's no flop. This is uh, a shout out to Dave Portnoy, no flop in cauliflower, cauliflower pizza. Uh, and you can really kind of get that crispy crust kind of thing going. Try cauliflower pizza, lower carbs. It's better for you. Um, I've really, really enjoyed it. And I can't believe how good it is without the carbs. It's really some good stuff. So those are my kind of my outlets. Uh, of course, I don't do any desserts, ice cream, cake, I wasn't really a huge cake guy. I would eat it because I was I was eating it because I was really nonsensical, non-thinking about what I'm eating or ice cream. I would eat some ice cream. Oh my gosh, I would destroy some ice cream. That's one of my favorite things. Always has been, but I've cut that out. And I've cut out cheat days, guys. There's no cheat days. I know there's diets and things and I see people following, you know, certain diets where they get a cheat day. For me, when there's a cheat day, I take it to the extreme. I, I'm, I'm off the wagon, basically. And that's just me. You guys may know yourself better where you can do cheat days and you're fine. You'll, you won't fall off. I will fall off. The train will come off the tracks. Um, it'll be rolling off the tracks, hurting people. And I can't do that. So I can't do this um, cheat day scenario. So that's really been my diet. And the last thing, and this is the one that I wanted to save for last because everybody's asked me about it. And uh, um, it, it is a serious topic for some. So I wanted to save this for last. I have completely, in the last uh, seven, eight months, completely cut out any kind of alcohol. Now, before I start with this part of it, I want to say that I've never really had any issues, maybe minor back in the day when I was younger uh, issues with alcohol, but nothing as an issue with adult. I'm really not that, wasn't that big a drinker. Uh, have I been completely drunk, wasted off my mind for sure. Uh, but that was more rare occasions. And when I started to look at performance and physical performance, and I started to look at this idea of toxicity and poison with the body. And I started to look at, I'm getting older. How do I feel when I first get up? Can I make my morning? Can my morning make the whole day if I have a good successful morning? And, and all of the stuff that comes with alcohol and hangovers and, and just different things like that, I just felt like I, I, I don't need it. And I felt like it was more of a hindrance, not a problem, but a hindrance with what I want to do and kind of my goals. And to be honest with you, I don't miss it at all. Um, the interesting thing is when you don't drink in front of a social crowd and uh, you get a lot of pressure from people that are, oh, are you too good to have a beer with us? And I love IPA beers. Like I'm not a hard alcohol drinker. 
Um, if I do, it's probably a shot or two of tequila. I know that seems a little much, but um, I love IPA beers. We have some really, really good microbreweries throughout Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, um, kind of the Mecca almost for that. And, and so I love that. I've completely given that up because I feel like I just don't miss it. And it's the benefits far outweigh the negatives. I would never tell somebody else what they have to do with that. I might give them some advice, but for other people, they might be fine and they have different goals and ambitions and do what you want. Like, I don't care. Do whatever you want. I just know for me that I wanted to go a different route and feel a different way. And this has been my whole journey so far. And I just don't see that coming back. Would I ever have a glass of wine or something in the future? I might, but I just don't, right now, I just don't miss it. And I don't, um, I don't want to introduce it into my um, uh, world right now as to be a hindrance. So that's it. Um, that's, that's basically what I've been eating and drinking. That's it. That's what I've been doing. And that has probably got me to the point that I was able to lose the 75 pounds. That's got me to the point where I've been able to, I feel so good. I, I can run and we're going to talk about that in the next podcast. I can run. I don't want to say forever, but compared to where I started out, I wasn't running. I was just walking to get a mile in or a half mile in, man, I am way beyond that way, way, way beyond that. And so I'm just interested to see where all of this goes. It's been a really nice way to incorporate this in my life. And when I think about an entrepreneur and I think about a business owner, a real estate investor, I think about my family and longevity and uh, athletes in, you know, at one point in my life, I was an athlete. Let's, let's hold off. I think people are laughing a little bit. I was, believe it or not. Um, just kidding. I know you wouldn't laugh. Get me on the court. I'll play you right now. I'll play anybody right now. We'll put money on the line. I'll play you right now. Um, but I was an athlete. I think about all these things and I think about how we move away from that stuff as an entrepreneur and as a business owner, as a real estate investor. And that sucks. That, that fucking sucks. It doesn't have to be that way. And that's where I got sick and tired. That's where I was like, man, this, this sucks that not only am I getting older, my body's changing, but I feel like I'm out of control because I'm not doing the things that I know I should be doing, but I'm not doing it. Let's just call a spade a spade. I'm not fucking doing it. And I need to fucking do it. Or I'm going to be in trouble down the road, or I'm not going to achieve the goals that I want to achieve. And to me, that felt that that sucked. And I don't want to do that. Um, I, I just don't want to do that. I want to, I want to make progress. And this is, this is going to seem maybe strange to you, but this is how I get paid now. Um, I get paid. If somebody said, Hey, all you have to do is eat clean and exercise or do some kind of workout. Would you compare that to the payment and the feeling that you get of being in shape and being, on top of your game with what you eat and how you perform when you're running or any other sport, riding a bike or whatever it is, would you compare that to getting a check for, you know, a hundred thousand dollars? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And as I get older, I realize that you get paid in other ways in life, but we put so much focus, so much fucking focus on money. Cause I know it, it's what pays the bills and it's what gives you status. And it, it's what, uh, puts you on the map and it's your identity. Cause that's your job and all this shit. But I'm here to tell you, there's other ways to get paid in life. Artists get paid by producing art, looking at a picture. Musicians get paid by playing a song or writing a song. Um, there's other ways to get paid and, I'm telling you, you will regret this on your deathbed if you're not looking at other ways to get paid in life. And this is just part of my journey. Um, so this is part one of three. 
The next one, I'm going to talk about what I've been doing with working out, how I've been on this journey to lose 75 pounds, and why this has been so good for me as an entrepreneur, and why this has been so good for me as a business owner. Um, so I will, uh, I'll talk about that in the next podcast. Remember, wealth has nothing to do with money. I've been saying that. I just talked about that. Um, success has everything to do with failures and life is as simple as you make it. Guys, we'll see you on the next podcast. You don't want to miss it. We'll talk soon.